So here we are. Good morning and good afternoon, both because uh, Frank Franco, you just as in the morning and Ting Ting yes. in the late afternoon. Ting Ting, tell a bit about you. You're uh, Chinese, but you studied also fashion design in China, but also in London. And there mm -hmm. you had a crazy idea. But I leave it to you to explain the situation in the story, which <laughs> seems very cute. Yeah, but yeah, I um yes, I I went to London to study the um, design for five years, three years bachelor degree in the Saint Joseph and Martins, and then two years master degree in Royal College of Art, and the I was majoring in uh, textile design in Saint Joseph and Martins, and especially I'm very obsessed with knitting, um and combine knitting with some new like technology like um, uh, engineered knitting stuff um, and then I went to Royal College and I choose a very special uh, subject which is millinery design and yeah, they yeah. said that no Chinese student was applying for that subject um, because it's not, not really a big culture in China we don't yeah. really have the habit of wearing hats but I just, um, I don't know, I want a container for me to express my feelings uh, rather than just making fabrics. Um, so I think a hat is, um, is a very, um, for me, it's like a little uh, container, like a cup I can pour in a coffee or juice or whatever I want soda. And it's not like a clothes. Um, I think I will have more freedom I'm making a hat because people have no expectations of what a hat should be. So that gives me a lot of freedom and space to use this as a media. And uh, yeah, and then I went, I, um, I started to uh, do some, I want to combine the, uh, the data and the virtual life and internet culture with the engineered knitting fabrics. And then to make hat like a little cloud like iCloud, but it's a physical cloud uh, mixing with a lot of data that's going on there and the data will uh, influence how the yarn's going together and how the shapes of the hat's gonna go. Um, and yeah, basically that, that is my academic experiment. And, uh, but I, I have to say at that time, my subject, like my content, my context of my work is still just uh, a little bit up in the air, like I'm um, like, a, Cuckolander, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then um, Cloud Cuckolander, yeah. And then I went back to China, um, and then I started to really uh, went to factory and to get to build up relationship with the local workers in a uh, fashion industry, not just um, you know catwalks or the beautiful things, but also the the life of the um, Chinese manufacturers. Um, and, uh, and also the dark side of Chinese made in China, producing all, all, all of that. And uh, I found my subject and put it into my container. And ah. so I, yeah, I, I started a lot of social concern projects in China and uh, the context may be quite, um, com um, quite uh, um, <laughs> how do you say, uh, special and a uh, little bit hard to, for, for for, for foreigners to understand. Uh, so all the, so for, for my friends in London and they know me better about my works um, while I was in Royal College of Art and while I was joined the ITS competition. Um, but in China, people are familiar with me uh, by the work that I did with the social concern project. So basically, yeah. yeah. And it's that actually first school. My yeah, Chinese that sounds good. I, I like that you use often the word container because it's actually the project that I was writing and uh, wow. I was writing the container for the now, for the now generation, for a younger generation. And you should fill that container with content. So I'm happy that you do it already. You're busy already on the container project to fill mm -hmm. ideas and content. Uh, Gianfranco is another story. I know him a little bit better. We had the chance to talk many times. He's Philippine and came to Florence, but I leave him his little story to himself because he can 
uh, to live better than I do. Yeah, um, since I graduated uh, from Polymoda in 2013, already from, uh, from the graduation collection from, from Polymoda, uh, I got this attention from a Japanese distributor that actually has seen not my graduation collection, but uh, a random performance video that I did during my graduation collection, uh, where I was uh, emulating and uh, studying this um, uh, particular Japanese uh, group movement from the 50s, the Gutai movement, that basically they were like uh, painting and action painting in a, in a in a really particular way. They were really like uh, painting with the water guns or with electronic uh, uh, cars driven with a marker attached on the back. So I decided like to, to study them on how they were like finding new colors or new graphics by doing this crazy stuff. So I did it like uh, this video uh, at, uh, at, at Polymoda. And I recorded the video, I put it online on a, not just a label. And after two weeks, I got this email from this distributor saying, ah, oh, what you did is really crazy. It's something that we never seen it before. So they, I got an email and they said, okay, I wanna try to, to buy your collection from the graduation collection. And, and actually it had a really good uh, feedback from the, from the proper consumer. And uh, since then, they decided like to to support me and to distribute my my collection in uh, in Japan. Mm -hmm. So, but after that, uh, basically, I didn't want to properly launch my brand because I felt that I was uh, still like uh, uh, young. So I decided first of all, I I moved to to Antwerp where I did my very first internship, and after that, I moved to to Paris. Uh, to do other works in the, in some other companies, but while I was doing my internship, I was keeping alive, let's say, my project. My I call it like my personal diary. So nowadays, the main signature of the brand Self Made is like an embroidery, an embroidery with the that I'm using to write my words, my feelings. So already from from the very beginning, I was writing all my let's say pain, all my joy, everything that I had in mind that I wanted to express and to tell my consumers. Mm -hmm. And actually I've noticed that the consumers, the proper uh, customers, they were not only attached to, to the garment, but because it was good quality or was nice, the color, but they were attached to the things that I was expressing through the words that I was writing on the garments. Mm -hmm. So since the very beginning, I wanted to, to stay attached to this, let's say I call it like my expressive animal instinct where every season I'm trying to, to speak about uh, um, the, uh, the, the world we're living in, how I'm feeling, how I could change it, how I can support it. And that's basically what I'm doing now while I'm trying to uh, to 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 work on my on my brand, I'm still trying to not uh, let's say be too much compromised by by the real fashion system. I'm trying, I'm still trying to keep alive my my joy of doing this job, and still trying to talk about things that I that I like. But then, of course, later on, we're gonna see that you know there are certain laws in a way in this fashion system driven by by other things that you cannot really uh, control driven by the marketing and by the sales feedback price points and this kind of stuff but still i'm trying to have fun still on uh, on my project and on the garments and each collection so Tintin, talk about about your hat um, and what you that digital uh, impression and, and messages that you have in that kind of um, project. What is the message of your work? Where the, do the, you put your energy? Yeah, the message. Yeah, so it actually is a really a organic growing process. At the very beginning, well, I was in uh, in London. And the first question that hit me is who I am, because um, 
when I was in China, I don't really have these feelings of I have to ask, okay, what is my identity? I'm just thinking, I'm a la 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 la. And I don't have to really think about what is the, like the real identity. And I just have a very strong feelings of expressing myself, like just that like animal instinct of like, oh, I want to express, I want to 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 tell people my feelings and my thinking. And but when I was in but I don't have a technique to to provide them in a very sophisticated and in a way that I expect it to be. But when, so when I, I went to London, then I want to learn how I can express myself better. And then the question just hit to me is like, the, the, the tutors start to ask, okay, then who you are and what is your inner identity of yourself? Um, art, uh, Zoe is the course leader and the, she just keep asking us these questions. And I was so annoyed for a period of time. I don't even want to meet her. Oh, I know. Don't ask me who I am. I, I don't want to answer this because I don't know. Because I, I thought I know because I was always very confident. And I always know, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. But yeah. when she asked us to do the like a mirror, mirror project, that is like you, you have to tell people who you are. And I was just stuck for the first of my time. I think I don't know who I am. I yeah, I'm I'm a Chinese, and um, I was born in the nineteen in the nineteen nineties, like this internet age. And but if you ask me who I am, I really have a accurate word. And if I express it in um, in a in certain way, I just feel it's not the all of it. It's just a very small piece of it. And then I start to question myself. Uh, it's a really a big self question time at that at that time when I was in RCA, and then I start to find out that actually I'm just like a a um, a cloud, you know. I'm like a container um, because I was born when I was little. It's already an internet time, and all the informations and the culture that I um, I learned were all from the internet. And they were all so small pieces, um, and it's not something that I um, I experience them physically. It's something that I I get from the screen, I get from other people's words, and uh, because I was born in 1990s, um, in that at that period of time, uh, China already opened their open the gate and it's already um, we are so embracing all different kinds of cultures into our home. Um, home country and it's not like in a cultural revolution and also because of the cultural revolution and, and all the previous history of China um, I lost my connections with my old family like the, the culture stopped um, so basically I'm like a blank paper and all the Chinese society is a bit like a blank pa paper and then suddenly the economics just developed so fast and we're receiving all the cultures not by just doing trade or people come to our land and have some different lifestyle it's not by this way it's by opening the gate and then connecting with the internet so for me everything is a bit like very fast fast and i don't have a fi fixed culture route in any of the things I can't say that, okay, I'm Chinese, so my culture is about paper cutting, it's about wood structure, it's about dragon, phoenix, a spring festival. I I feel strange. And I, I don't think that I'm much more familiar about these things than you guys do. So I have to be honest, then I think, okay, I don't really have a very physical, I didn't like very fixed identity. I'm just like a cloud and information just flow instead, instead of me and, uh, I'm very good at perceiving, um, process the informations, but it's all about uploading, downloading, uploading, downloading. I'm just like a container. So I'm not like my friend who from East London and they just have that vibe that I'm so jealous of that they just have this vibe of naturally, you know, that the culture, they're stuck into the culture and they were just like sponge and every, Every liquid come from their body, just from East London. But me, I am from everywhere, and nothing is very physical and deep. But they would mix together and connect in a very chaos, 
and big scale. So for me, and I have to be honest then to tell them that I am um, a container. I'm, I'm not a cup of tea or cup of coffee or, or a bottle of juice. I'm a, a cup. <laughs> I am a cup. And I've been, you could pure all, all different kinds of liquid in, inside of me. And then I will become a juice, become a coffee or become a something. So, and then I was thinking, okay, like a head is very close to our head and I want to make, but still I have this um, nervousness inside of me that I want something physical in a material wise, not just a virtual. So I was thinking, okay, can I make something connect my identity, the cloudy identity into a fabrics or something you can actually touch and feel. So I start to work with, I collect a lot of data and mix them together. And then I do a, a data visualizations to transfer the data into a very beautiful visual and adding colors, adding um, a different colors to, to adding my emotional feelings and then transfer all the data visualizations and my, my self design arrangements of those data visualization into the engineered knitting machine and to knit the information out. And it's a very interesting thing is because I use the technique called Jacquard, I think you should be very familiar with. Um, but for Jacquard, um, because I put a lot of information into it, it got a lot of uh, colorful pixel spot. And that makes the, the fabric a very in a very big curve. Yeah, a very big curve. And I feel like this curve is actually uh, got something to do with the pattern. Um, and then I add some other meeting patterns to, to, to dance with the curve, to make them into small curves. Uh, so they have a very beautiful flow. And when I, it's not just a jacquard, plain jacquard, it's a jacquard with different meeting textures. So when I open it and it's not a print, it's a really lively, it feels like, um, a digital um, screen, but in a real life. And then I tried a lot and to achieve this aesthetics of a physical digital screen feelings from a knitted fabrics. And then I start to change a lot of uh, data, a lot of data and make a series of hats with these fabrics. And they were all in different alien shapes, but I didn't block anything or put any structures to support them. They're just growing like whatever they want and I work with it, dance with it. And uh, so so the first series uh, collection, I call them um, Cloud Hat. And then <laughs> at the final presentation, I still remember, uh, at the final presentation at the Royal College of Art, there's a guest professor, I really like him, but I forgot his name. And he asked me one question, say, um, so thinking, well, it's a very fabulous project, but I want to ask all those uh, informations, what does this mean to you? They are very fabulous, I can see you collect a lot of data, but what is the personal connections with you and those data? And my nervousness hit me again. <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay, so I don't really have a topic. I just, I just, Okay, just I say like okay, give me a break. I just find out I am a container, and I just uh, make the fabrics to express I'm a container, and maybe my my topics is the next stage. So yeah, um, yeah and then I back to China, um, and something ha magically happened, and I got my contacts. I think. Now what I, I'm doing and putting the context into my head is my experience when I'm back to China. Yeah. It's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful story. I think, are we not all searching for that, Gianfranco? Because uh, we also ask ourselves, who am I? If, if I see the three of you on my screen, we are so different in generations, different uh, moments in life. And I am also asking myself every day, who am I and what is the purpose of what I am doing? Why am I writing this fashion container project? Because I could have easily done without. But I think we have all three the kind of 
dream that we should change something in the world, is it? It's so, um, the fashion system, but also other systems, the whole political system is so old and traditional and tired. Gianfranco, don't you feel we have to change something in the kind of how we communicate with people? Yeah, I mean, as Tintin uh, was saying before, I mean, we are the child of this new digital era where we're living in now. So for sure, everything, not only fashion, is adapting to the evolution of the, the, the world, of the, the humanity. So for sure, everything is changing. Everything has changed thanks to the new technology. And um, so from, from the communication to the proper uh, final product, lots of things changed. But at the same time, it's good, I think, like to 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 change but at the same time it's really important as well to preserve the proper knowledge the feelings that uh people in this industry uh are putting especially like uh, as designers when we are building the each collection or each garment i think we should still preserve that that the joy that that pain that feeling that brought us to choose that color that brought us to choose that fabric but of course uh, nowadays we are not uh, communicating anymore that product as we were doing probably in the early 80s or 90s we're gonna use the the digital uh, evolution so now with all the platforms like uh, uh, instagram or the newer like TikTok, we of course we're gonna use those platforms to to communicate that color that we chose so i think it's um it's um it's a funny and interesting moment we're living in for all of us from the older generation to the new generation like to see this this big change that unfortunately had affected the world in terms of uh, on all the disaster that is happening you know lately to the to the to the world so as uh, working in this industry we need to help the world to heal and and uh, and to start working in a more uh, you know uh, friendly way because because i think we in the last years we only thought about uh consuming producing and unfortunately as as you said linda this is the uh the second industry that is polluting the more uh the most the the world so as everyone not only as uh, as me and tintin like younger brands but also the bigger brands needs to 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 start like changing all together only if we're working all together we can make a proper change because we we cannot hide the fact that lots of natural disasters are happening and they're not happening randomly like uh, you know everything that is happening so actually it was interesting like at the beginning of this um this new collection that i'm we're gonna present in January. I actually had a meeting with all my suppliers and trying to find a solution with them. Actually, we spent like a whole month in all uh, our warehouses where we were stocking all our fabrics. And with my team, we were looking to each other, trying to understand how we can reuse those fabrics. So uh, we, we used like some wool or some ready to print cotton that we use like probably five seasons ago we're gonna reuse it or we're gonna reuse some um, some jacquard uh, mohair we're gonna do a kind of uh, uh, mix and match of different fabrics just also of course it's also a savings of a uh, of, uh, of budget by reusing fabrics that you already bought in the past seasons so first of all we did this as a small thing in our company but as well together with my with my suppliers we tried to find to look and to search out search like fabrics that were recycled from the very uh, beginning of the you know from from the loom or from the from the thread itself you know coming from uh, 
from um, upcycled uh, fabrics as well. So we are trying but in our small reality because of course uh, we, we, I cannot change the world. As I said in the beginning, we need all together to work um, in the same direction because we cannot, we cannot hide, unfortunately, all the disasters that are happening to our fantastic world. So I'm trying in, in, in my small reality. And, uh, and I hope that things are gonna change and uh, I'm ready to see and to look forward on how fashion is gonna change because uh, the next uh, fashion week as well is gonna be digital. So it's gonna be interesting to see how other brands and other companies are gonna present their work, uh, not physically, but digitally. So it's interesting. It's an interesting moment, I think, for for the general culture, not only for, for fashion, but for music, for, for musicians that, that they cannot do anymore like concerts. They are trying to adapt to this new world by doing concert on streaming or artists, let's say how they're gonna do without any art fair, physical art fair. So I'm looking forward to see the evolution. Yes, uh, me too. Uh, I think we, we have to be now in, in a few minutes do you think that we can step out of the system and creating a new system that is more humble and less pretentious and uh, more gentle to each other? Because I feel that the big companies, uh, I don't name them, but we know who we want uh, to say, they are so powerful that we feel asphyxiated a bit. And I think with this new container project that we could contact like we do today, you meet now and maybe you are going to do some things together, Ting Ting and, and Gianfranco, I never know. But you know that we should a little bit think out of the system and, and uh, find a way to uh, bring our ideas into the world, to the retailers maybe, to the museums, to the institutes, because uh, they are quite old fashioned as well and old in thinking. So I think we have to think also not too much about the fashion system that will go on after uh, next year will become back to normal. What is the normal for them? But I think we have to find a new normal for ourselves. And, and, and it's not about generations. I don't like Gen Z and millennials, MPRL. I don't like those segmentation of the uh, society. I think we are all there together to find a new other system for bringing our ideas to the world in a more uh, humble and a more less greedy uh, mentality. What do you think? Last word, same thing. Um, yeah, because I think it's very interesting when I came back to China and I, and I find that it's very interesting is because Chinese become China is becoming a huge market for all the yes. fashion, for all the big brands. And uh, I'm then I then I became like because I'm a fashion like I'm a fashion designer, I'm a young generation and I do some very crazy stuff. Um, and then just a lot of big brands, they will, the marketing people, they were just inviting you to have a grab, to grab a cup of coffee and ask you, uh, so tell us more about Chinese young people. They are so important for us. We want to express the culture. We want to educate them. I want to, ah, we just want to tell them how amazing Chinese culture is. I was like, mm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really, I really don't like it. I like, I feel like it's, so scary because then all the all the young people in the next generation they just become the they, just, they were, are haunted by the big brands by the culture machine because they're be, they are the biggest culture creator country like you said they are so powerful and uh, now it's social media time as well anything the informations can flow like a flood can can just flow everywhere into everyone's life not just their target market target markets but also people who cannot afford the very big brands products they can also get all those seducing images or the informations from the internet from the social media so i just feel like they are creating so many desires and so many um 
they, they, they creating cultures based on the purpose of selling things um, completely. Um, and the, and the, the marketing just became just becomes so like, like it, it took too 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 much too many percentage of the whole thing. Um, and and then if every like the next generation they, they are all get used to um, learn things from the internet or knows about cultures from buying stuff from how the like big brand tell them what cultures, what is hip hop, what is um, our African culture, what is uh, la 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 Chinese culture, and they, they they were educated by the big brands, and they 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 approach the culture through the translation of the the business, the fashion business, and I just really worried because I think it's better for you to not knowing something than you just know a, a very uh, bias or the very small small parts of it, and you thought oh it is all about it. You know, so the, I think it's just like uh, we all live in a very uh, informative age, but actually, probably, we know less about a thing than before, because before you you could still experiencing things, and it, like us human is not a like AI AI based on the big data, but human based on a small data. We can just uh, know a tiny bit of things, and then we have the emotions to to picture and to imagine. The rest of the things that's a very unique way of human learning and the process um, re, pr, like receiving things and that hugely abound with creativity i think but now just so many data and the fashion industrial educate the young generation about what culture is i just when i'm because i also teach some of the young people in a, um, and I give them some lectures as well. And I feel it's so hard to approach the, approach them because if you ask them, uh, what do you think of, um, for example, a, a plant, like a flower? And the, the answer from them will be all the things they read about online. And they was oh I read about it um uh, there's a something tell me about this and oh I know also something like colors blah, blah, but I cannot know his or her true feelings about this flower yeah. I have to swimming through all the informations all the reference that they get from the internet or the brands or the pop cultures and then to approach with their inner feelings about these flowers so for me it's just I feel everywhere is we 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 are all customers we are not um a women or men or a teacher or a student or a banker we are all customers and uh, and uh, the consuming behavior kind of showing us who i am or i appreciate this or i appreciate that but behind it is actually all leading by the um by the advertisements yeah. <laughs> I, you know. I think you're right Ting Ting, and i think we have we can't um close internet we can't close we can't stop this movement but i think we can go deeper into our own uh, personalities and our own beliefs i came from antwerp where no fashion was ever um, we were not a fashion city we invented everything from scratch and there were not so internet was not there we did it all by the way that we could do it you know it was really amateuristic in a way, but it was full of passion. And that's mm. what I think that we should refine by saying the decolonization, forget a bit the top and the big brands and think a little bit more local and try to connect locally with Johannesburg. There is in Africa now in Lagos, there is a Rise Fashion Week. I discovered beautiful people there. So it is time ready. It, it's urgently time to stop thinking about the fashion system as it is, use it as you think it's necessary. But I think we are ready and I am ready and we all are ready to find a new way to communicate. This, because connecting is uh, actually the, the term of my new fashion container program. So I think we have to close here. We had a fantastic discussion. Yeah. Gianfranco, the last word is for you. He's the oldest guy. Oh no, that's me. No, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to, as you said, we need to look 
more deeply inside of us and we can make a small change ourselves in our daily routine by the the um, how we are going to live our daily routine from the from the morning till till the evening all the choice we are going to choose you know so it has to be with passion not driven by a commercial that we've seen yeah. on the instagram feeds that's the most important thing to Wonderful. listen more to our soul yeah to our soul that's yeah. a good start uh, a good concept to start the day for me and Gianfranco and to end the day for thinking Thank you. It was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It was interesting. Uh, this, Thank you. Uh, conversation.